Shalom, brethren. You come to another Bible study from forward to Yahweh. Before you forget, I'll ask you to click the like button and the subscribe so that you'll always be notified of other studies. This is meant to be a short one so that you can look at the accompanying videos listed at the end. Okay, God told Adam mainly, and some would say Eve, that in the day they disobey him and eat of the fruit, they would die. In reference to Adam, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, and in reference to Eve, we see chapter 3, verse 3. What happened that human day, which is 24-hour period, and God's day is like a thousand years? We're talking about you in Adam's and Eve's sex. They were separated from God's presence put out of the garden, written out of his favour and book of life in a sense. Thus, death is to be separated from God in this human life. And if you do not repent and return to obey him, also in the eternal separation in the after this physical um, death, it's called the second death in Revelations. We see, a, we see numerous examples in the Bible of persons who disobeyed God and were separated from him. Also, many examples of some who repented, returned to obedience and received his favor. Sadly, some left it too late or their repentance was not accepted, such as King Saul. And if I remember rightly, maybe also King Solomon, but don't quote me on him. You only have one human life to get it right by learning what God requires and obeying him. First John chapter 3, verse 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And I'm sure we ask most Christians or Bible readers for eternal life. No one knows the hour when their life may suddenly end. Yet, at this time of year, most do not care, are ignorant, or have been deceived by the devil in thinking their disobedience may be accepted or overlooked by God. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, God says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 30, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following him, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So we're not even, anyway, I'll come on to that in a minute. Last quote at this time. The third John chapter 1, verse 7. Because that for his name's sake, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. My point here, we are to have no knowledge of pagan customs, to even be snared to keep them under false pretenses. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2, God instructed, you shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which you shall possess serve their gods, upon the high places, and upon the mountains, so upon the hills, and, up, and under every green tree. I put that in capital to draw attention as to the similarity to, to ever green tree, from where the Christmas um, tree custom comes. You may have heard the movie Sleeping with the Enemy. Something you, I assume, would not do had you been better informed of historical events. Whether the enemy of yourself, your family, or your people. For those who say they do not care about origins of, 
off customs and do not connect the present purpose with the past. That's just an excuse that people use. The tree is not just a decoration. Remembrance, especially on the 25th of December, is not just a holiday and all the other excuses that people make. You cannot change the purpose of the devil's deception. Like with Eve in the garden, he gave her a deception point of view that she would accept. Yet it was to get her to disobey God and obey him. He convinced her and she persuaded Adam. The devil has convinced your religious and worldly leaders to persuade you. You cannot offer to God a creation, thing, or thought of the devil. You may not know of the origins of a pagan anti-God custom because the initial generations have died. But God knows, and every time he sees you practice it, it grieves him. Yeshua, wrongly called Jesus by most, gave the significance of tradition keeping, even if you do not know. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. He said, and he said unto them, full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Mark chapter 7 verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered and many such things you do. God also stated the purpose of his tradition keeping. One in Exodus chapter 12 verse 26, it says, and it shall come to pass and your children shall say unto you, what meaneth you by this service? So they may not know the original thing, but they they keep the custom, but the original purpose was meant to be passed down if they asked or if they forgot about it. Exodus chapter 13, verse 14. And it, sh and it shall be when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, what is this that thou shalt say unto him by the strength of the hand of Yahweh, brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. It is not just a meal. Generations later, which is how that, that memorial was be kept. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20. And when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Yahweh your God hath commanded you? See also Joshua chapter 4, verse 21. Psalms 44, verse 1, and 78, verses 3, 2, 6. So my point is, um, the origins of things is what counts, whether you know it or not. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, takes us way back to um, the origin of the Christmas tree. In biblical t explanation, thus saith Yahweh, Learn not the way of the heathen, which is also another word for Gentiles, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. In other words, they make gods about things from in the heavens. Remember, we just called, 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 called them the host of heaven and the things of gods on the earth. So if you look at the, the first and second commandment, you be not to make of image or anything that's in heaven, on earth, or beneath the earth. So that's, that's what is meant by um, the heathen are dismayed by them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it, means cover it, with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. Sounds familiar? Christmas tree, decorate it, put it, make it stand up straight, it doesn't fall, it doesn't move. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. But the heathen believes there is power in these trees because they are ever they are green all through the year. They didn't die um, like some other trees. So first Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Um so Samuel, saying to King Saul, and Samuel said, has the Lord as, as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in, as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of the rams. That's a story I suggest you read out. Samuel 
So Saul thought he was obeying the commandment. In fact, he told Saul, yes, I have obeyed. And then when so, um, if you read it, you'll see Samuel said, well, no, you haven't. You may think you have, but in God's eyes, you haven't, basically. Haggai, chapters 2, verse 11. Thus says Yahweh, the God of hosts, ask, how the, ask, ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, if one, if a person, bears a holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt, he touches some bread or some food, some pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, or anything, basically, shall it be holy? Because you, ha you have some, you're a holy person, you, you touch something that is, that is not holy, does that make that thing holy? And the priest answered and said, no, it doesn't. Verse 13, then said Haggai, if one that is unclean, now do the opposite, if one that is unclean by a dead body, let's say, touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. In other words, if, you, if something is unclean and it touches something that is clean, it becomes unclean like it. The Bible says a little leaven corrupts the whole lump. However, if something clean touches something unclean, it doesn't transfer the holiness to that thing. Like people say, I will just bless the pork or bless the bacon and eat it. You cannot do that. If God says it's unclean, it's unclean. And you blessing it doesn't make it holy or, or, or accepts it with God. Haggai chapter 2 verse 14. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says Yahweh. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer, there is unclean. I hope that's clear to you. Do not be one of the Lord, Lord claimers who Yeshua never knew as they worked iniquity. We see this in Matthew chapter 7, 21, verse 23. They practiced what they thought was good stuff, um, but Yeshua said they're actually, he never knew them, they were practicing, practicing iniquity, they were working against him. And that is what keeping customs of the heathen is saying, such as this Christmas season. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7, has another take on it. You hypocrites, these people draw near unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And that was not a thought. They have Christmas services, they have um, change of services from New Year's, all things that are not of God. So in vain they say, Lord, Lord, but God is not pleased. It, so, Adam and Eve were the living dead. And it was a humanly alive, but separated from God. The living dead. Or, as we say today, dead man walking. All who are living in disobedience to God, whether by deception of the devil or other, are likewise the living dead. Mark chapter 12, verse 26. And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses, how the bush, how in the bush, God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but the God of the living. You therefore do greatly err, basically not, you're in error, not knowing that God is just the God of the obedient, the God of the living. So note those three mention, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are the fathers of God's law keeping. For example, speaking of Abraham, he says in Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So even when Abraham didn't understand God's commandment, i.e. pack up and go, he went. And it was counted to him for righteousness in his, his obedience. Luke chapter 12, 16, verse 29. The parable that Yeshua was telling about um, the rich man and Lazarus who died. When Lazarus, the rich man was saying, well, can you send someone back from the dead so that my brethren will know to do good and or live, live right and not end up in hell where I am, basically. And the answer was, Abraham says unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. 
So there you have it. Your guide is by the law given to us through Moses, by God through Moses and the prophets. You better do likewise, because, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, we are in, in the past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come up the wrath of God on the children of disobedience. And those vain words is to give you excuses why you can keep Christmas and so forth. Colossians 3, verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God come up on the children of disobedience. If that's the only criteria, you are in disobedience to God. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 9. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahweh. So, do not follow the lies and deception of the devil, promoted by the world and probably your church. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 comes to mind. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So as they set up their own churches, according to the pastor, preacher, or apostle, or whatever, they are not. They have transformed themselves into that, that position. And it may tell you it's from God, but it's not. The mere fact they are teaching to keep Christmas and all kinds of things is clearly going against God's instructions. Instead, we are to, our guide should be Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church, I mean the congregation in the wilderness, with the angel who spoke to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. That should be our, our mandate. I pray my James chapter 5, verse 20 message is well received in love, in the love of his sin. Um, I leave you, you to read what James chapter 5, verse 20 says. And I remind you to please press the like, the subscribe, and the share indicators at the bottom of this YouTube video. If it is a message too so pricking for you, it may help someone else who is more Berean ready minded and receptive to it. You read about Bereans in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Shalom, and below you see the links to three videos for your further education.